<laughs> what is the uh, what's the biggest mistake people find today when trying to find their love or find someone that they you know their soulmate? Oh my god! What's the wow. biggest mistake? Is it being yourself? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I I I think there's a something of a sense of entitlement that most of us have uh, or that most people have when they're going out to date where they somehow feel like they're just owed mm. the love of their life, that it shouldn't be difficult, that, um, that they don't have to do anything, that it's enough, that they are just them. You know, it's the, you know, that there's, I don't know if you've ever seen Bridget Jones, but there's a, there's a line in Bridget Jones where, uh, forget his name, Colin Firth, I think it is. He's, he's looking at Bridget and he's, I think he says, I love exactly how you are. I love you. Like mm -hmm. no changes, nothing. I, I love you exactly how you are. And it, sometimes we feel like we're owed that. And it kind of becomes an excuse again, to not be lazy to grow, yeah. not to, you know, I, I don't, frankly, I, it doesn't really matter what you think you're owed in love. Yeah. Uh, no one cares. I think it's the same thing with work and you know, so many people are entitled and they it, think they should everything. just get a job. You yeah. Know? And, and so the biggest criticism I get all the time, which I'm happy with as a criticism of my advice uh -huh. is, well, why do you need to do all of this stuff? Why can't you just, you know, go through life and, and you know, it, when the time is right, you'll know. Mm. Why, why do you have to do all of these techniques? I'm happy with that criticism. If you, if you, if that's what you think, you're not my audience because my audience are the same people that go to a business seminar to make more money. Mm -hmm. They're the same people that say, you know what? Um, if I want to start a business, I might actually need to know what the hell I'm doing. It's not enough to have confidence in life. You have right. to have competence. Yeah. You have to actually know what you're doing. And, and that's what a lot of people don't know in their love lives. If you, for example, there's, there's something I come, I came to understand. I, I was, I remember once having a breakup. It was the most painful breakup I've ever had. I was really, really in uh, a bad way over it. And a while later, I spoke to this to this woman on the phone, and I had said to her on the, in a brave moment on the phone, I said, "Why did why did you want to break up?" Because by the way, you talked to the the woman you were dating. Yeah, the the one that had later on the phone. Later, like a year or two later, <clears throat> it was less raw. I was sure, feeling sure. a little and more. How long was the relationship for? Uh, a couple of years. Okay, wow. Right. And. Um, uh, and I was I was pretty cut up about it. Now the funny thing was, uh, to make a long story short, she had actually done something I didn't like, and that I mm. thought was inappropriate and disrespectful. And I remember going to her the next day and saying, "I think we need to break up." During the relationship, she did this, yeah. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> she then said to me, "Okay." That was when I knew she oh. was breaking up with me. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, when you, yeah, yeah. you think you're breaking up with them. No, she, no, was, she was, was already doing it. She was breaking up with me. Uh, and it was, what was so painful about it is that she was, she didn't mind. Uh, I, I was, I thought she might get upset. I thought, no, she didn't no. mind. And that was the most painful part about it. And I and shouldn't even fake it. You know, most women would fake that they might. Right? Like, I can't believe this, but they're really. I you know. know really... I know. No, she looked like she was okay. This is a good wow. decision. So I, <laughs> so I, I remember a while later we were on the phone and we were, we became we we're friends today. We we're yeah. very good friends, in fact. And uh, I had said to her on the phone, um, "Why did we break up?" I said, "What what was it for you that I wasn't doing?" And I braced myself for the answer. She said, do you really want to know? The honest feedback. And I said, I literally thought to myself, wait, do I really want to know? And I said, I gritted my teeth and I went, yeah, I want to know. She said, um, you were boring. And wow. there was so much worse than I thought it would be. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Wow. Like not, not just like, oh, well, you know, it was just, I was young and I was, the, and, you know, yeah. wanted to be free. No, you were boring. It was really cutting. <laughs> and, I, and I, I remember resisting the urge to bite back. And I like, said, I wasn't boring. Right, I was, you know. exactly. I said, no, you're in, shut up, idiot. Just, you <laughs> asked the question. So now yeah. listen. So I said, why was I boring? She said, you, she said, when I first met you, you were the most ambitious uh, person I'd ever met. And she said, I never met someone with such an ability to decide they want something and then get it. Mm. And she said it was so sexy. She said, but 
as we went into our relationship, the more time went on, the more that was all you were. You were super ambitious. You knew how to get what you want, but it, you were so one dimensional. Mm. You know, it was all you did. Even in our free time, you were just, you were on the phone, you were on your laptop, you would talk about your business. You were always talking shop. There was never anything else you had to talk about. We didn't do anything spontaneous. We mm. never went and had adventures. It was just all one track. And she said it, it got boring. Yeah. And I said, wow, it's, she was right. She was right. It's, there was nothing I could argue with. And I realized something in that moment. The thing that makes that one quality can make you really attractive, right? But it won't keep someone. It can make you get the person. Right. It can make you sexy. It can make you uh, intriguing. Mm -hmm. um, Mysterious. Right. But it can even for a time make someone worship or idolize you. Mm -hmm. One quality. But one quality will not hold someone because the reality was there was a flip side to ambition, which would have made it eminently more attractive. And there are a few, right? right. If you pair ambition, say, with an ability to enjoy life, mm. now that person is really sexy. super <laughs> sexy. You, you, you combine ambition with a sense of spontaneity, mm -hmm. for example. Adventure. Very, very sexy. Yes. Ambition on its own is when you look at it from afar, very, very attractive. You go, women will say, I want an ambitious man, I yes. like that. But when they get up close, if it's only one side to a coin, it quickly becomes unattractive. Mm. The, uh, uh, someone I'm a big fan of, or unfortunately has passed, but Christopher Hitchens, mm. he, um, he once said about love, that the, the, the challenge is in not allowing your strengths to negate themselves. Wow. And that's a very mm. powerful statement because my ambition was my greatest strength that also had the ability to be the thing that crippled me. Uh, because what happens is when you get good at something and you get validation from it, you it keep doing it and get better right, at it. Yeah. And it becomes, if you're not careful, a muscle that you, that you train to the point of mutation. Mm -hmm. And then every other part of you is, is, is not working is, it, it has atrophied. Yeah. So, now uh, you have a complete imbalance. Uh, it's like, a, you know, I remember working out at the gym once and my trainer, I was, I was uh, doing pull-ups and was trying to work out my back. My back was fine. I could keep going. <laughs> and then all of a sudden my, my forearms gave up mm. while I was trying to pull myself up. And I said, this is so annoying. We're trying to work my back, but my fore and my back's fine, but my forearms have given up. Right. He said, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Mm. If, you're, if your forearms aren't, aren't there, you're not going to be able to train your back as well as you could. Yeah. So... So here's the, the, the point about this, which I find very interesting about dating. To your point of what's the biggest mistake people make? Apart from, of course, the entitlement, it's over-reliance on a key strength that they have come to uh, rely on as their source of validation, mm -hmm. success, uh, confidence. Right. Over-reliance on that. I had come to over-rely on essentially being ahead of the curve for my age. Yeah. That was like the thing that I was always based my confidence on was I am way ahead of the curve for yeah. people my age. My business is going great. Correct. The, the, yes. the people I grew up the with publicity. in my, in my yeah. age group are not where I am. Just are still living at home. Or whatever, but guess yeah. what? That alone <clears throat> is boring. Yeah. It's boring and it doesn't make an interesting rounded sexy person. The, um, but when you combine it with something else, it becomes what I call unique pairing mm. it's a bit like if i if i wanted to really get a woman attracted tonight not me but like send a guy out to get a woman attracted i could literally if if he went in and he was a little cocky and teasing but in the right way mm -hmm. not an arrogant obnoxious sure. but just he knew how to he knew yeah. how to play with her and then a <clears throat> couple of hours in later you know maybe it's getting late he comes out of the restroom and after being teasing and playful and silly he says, you know what? It's getting late. Um, I called you a car. Um, I don't want you walking outside. And he says, I have to go as well. I have to get up early. He takes her outside. Um, he gives her a little kiss. He says, all jokes aside, I've had the best night with you tonight. I'll call you later this week. Mm -hmm. Puts her in the car. Car drives away. That woman will be going, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like this guy. Yeah. Now, the reason... 
wasn't because he was a gentleman and it wasn't because he was cocky and teasing. It was because he was both. Both of them, yeah. It's the and. If he does just one thing, it's not interesting enough. Because you can replace the cocky guy like that. Yes. Women know that. Yes. They can go out tonight and meet a cocky guy in Hollywood yes. any night of the week. They can go out the next... They don't even have to go out the next night. They can turn to their left <laughs> and meet another one straight right, away. Right. By the way, they, even though people complain about chivalry is dead, you can go out and meet a gentleman. Lots you can go out and meet lots of nice guys. But that's all they are. Right. Incredibly boring. Women will never... Too they, nice. They don't hold a woman. Yes. Right? So, but now... You find like what mm. seems to be a good man, but with an edge. That's, that's a unique pairing. Yes. And that's someone that becomes not an attraction, but an addiction. Oh, uh, and, like and there's a, a, a big, big difference. So I, th- I believe that we will actually, I believe these pairings already exist within us, but we've overtrained certain muscles. Mm-hmm. We've overtrained certain qualities that we've gotten used to as habit. Yeah. Uh, for some people, it's being funny. Uh, for other people it's being intellectual and they always they're the person that knows everything about everything they've read every book they can always quote so and so Uh, for others it's uh, uh, being seductive Mm -hmm. that's the thing they got really good at so they're really good at you know getting someone into bed or or, or getting someone sexually attracted but they're never the person you want to eat pizza with the next day (laughs) (laughs) you know so it's like it's finding those combinations that make you go Mm. oh my god the person I was with last night they were this and they were this. It's the and. The and is where <laughs> I wonder it's at. what else they could do. Exactly. <laughs> and you're, and by the way, that's what makes it so hard. It, I, I say this to everybody. If you want to know why you found it so hard to get over a certain ex, mm. look for the unique pairing. Because they had multiple things. That were there, was, there was some unique pairing Ugh. that made you feel Addicted. like they were difficult to replace. Oh, and, and that's what scares us. The more unique pairings you have, the more you become a rare bird in the dating marketplace. Right. right? And, and when you become rare, people get really terrified of, of losing you. And that's always the case. Whenever you think of someone you've lost and you think God, like your heart aches for having lost them. For like months and months. Yeah. You, it's because you go, it's not because you go, they were good in bed. It's because you go, they were good in bed and they made me laugh. <laughs> like, uh, like I never and find they were that. nice to right. my parents. And I took and them home <laughs> and she was a sweetheart to my, like there's, yeah. there's those moments where you go, God, I can't find this person again. And that terrifies mm. you. Yeah. So again, to be more positive about it, be the person that has the unique pairings mm-hmm. that other people are terrified of losing. Yeah. You know, I like this because I feel like well, I don't feel like, but the statistics show that the divorce rate is up higher than ever right now, right? Mm. Isn't it something like 50%? I don't know if you, you know hear, the numbers. I hear these, no, hear I, the numbers. I, I hear 50% banded around. How yes. accurate it is, I don't Who know. Knows. But it seems like people are getting married multiple times mm. uh, and they're easy to get out of relationships. They're, you know, and I'll speak for myself. You know, I am a lot of fears about long-term commitment. Mm. You know, most of my relationships are a year, um, maybe longer but usually about a year and then I'm like either bored or I get mm-hmm. scared because I have my own walls and I still get to grow and learn. For sure. Um, <clears throat> I'm curious, why do you think so many people bail in relationships and why do you think so many people are getting divorced more than ever now? Oh man, that's a big question. I, um, well, there are, I think there are a number of things. I can have a stab at, uh, at this. <laughs> I... I think firstly, there is less of a stigma now than there has ever been about divorce. It's okay now, right? Right. Not, you know, and it, 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 certainly there are parts of the world where it's not, and there are certain religions and cultures where it's not, but, but certainly less than ever. Sure. Let's speak in America at least. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's less of a stigma <clears throat> yeah. a, a, about divorce. We don't feel like complete failures in the same way that we might once have, or we wouldn't have, there would have been or a time where we would have been or... outcast from society yes. for it. So there's that. Um, I think there's also a greater sense of entitlement these days where people feel like they're owed and, uh, uh, you know, marriage is you've met the right person. So it's supposed to all feel great. And when it doesn't feel great and when it's not all working, there must be something wrong with this person. Not with me, not with the amount of effort I'm investing into this relationship. There must be something wrong with this person. Ah, it turns out they're not the one after all. Mm. I thought they were, but they're not. The search continues. So, wow. so it, the entitlement has people believing that it, it shouldn't be effort 
and and that's a very dangerous way to think of relationships yeah. it's very if you really want to see who someone is in their relationship um talk to them about sex and and passion and and desire in their long-term relationship and you'll get some very heated answers because some people will will uh will say it's absolutely paramount we you know you have to maintain that passion you have to find new ways to excite each other with me and my partner we're always searching mm. we're always exploring each other we're always trying to figure out like what's going to turn you on tomorrow what's the mm. like how how do i how do i do something that's that, that you didn't predict or how do i get you to know me a little less so that you get desire again mm -hmm. you know whatever it is other people and i've had hosts on tv get very very uptight and 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 upset over this issue and it's usually they're overplaying their hand mm. when they do they'll say well matt it's different when you're in a marriage when you're when you have kids <laughs> when you're in those situations it's different right you you don't you you can't just think of it like that you don't do, matt think other things become more important and and i always know who they are in their relationship when those things happen because it People, I think, don't go into relationships with a healthy view of what is required over the long term. And what is required? Uh, well, there's a, there's, a, there's a woman who is a, a great authority on this called Esther Perel. And she talks about the difference between love and desire. And uh, I'm a big fan of her work. And I think she articulates it very, very well. That in relationships, you have to have both love and desire. Love isn't enough love is the the thing that makes me want to get close to you when i when i when i feel things for you i want to mm -hmm. know your mind i want to know everything there is to know about sure. you i want to know what you're thinking i want to know what you're doing tonight i want to know who your friends are i want to become friends with them i want to get close to yeah. your mom i want like yeah, yeah. It's all these things that's love the desire to almost become merged mm -hmm. but desire exists in the space between two people mm -hmm. So you feel desire when there's a void yes. and when there's some mystery and when you're still getting to know someone. So desire, ironically, is the thing that ends up creating love because desire is like, I want to get close to you because I don't have you. And then when I get close, we feel feelings of love, but not desire now. And if you want to learn more about mastering relationships, then make sure to check out this video right here. Most sure. people go, go dating Here's what with. I want. Yes. yes. Here's, Here's what, what you need to be for me, mm. for me to then be interested in you. You know, right. be compelling to someone else rather than ask, wait for them to dazzle you mm -hmm. so that you can swipe in one direction or another.